Today, today people, today is a very special day because I'm going to be pissing off a lot of people. Hey guys, welcome back. Apologies in advance for this video not being my normal thought-provoking discussion that I'm usually known for. I've been grinding out 4 videos a week for the past month and uh, it's starting to get to me a bit, so I hope you're okay with something more lighthearted. So having made 3 separate episodes on champs that large portions of the community hates, I thought about adding my own spin on things by making a list of champions that I personally wish were just flat out removed from the game. Ordinarily, I'd like to take a neutral stance in most if not all of my videos, aside from, you know, a certain dual wielding individual, but today it's gonna be less Vars and more Jin. Jin's my name by the way. So this video is very personal. Here are my top 10 champions that should be deleted from the game, and after you're done watching, let me know what 10 champs you wish were gone in the comments. Let's get started. In no particular order, let's address Mr. Jester himself first, Shaco. If you remember my Toxic Champions video, I mentioned how he's not only a very despised champion, but the most despised champion. Last year there was a survey conducted in every champion subreddit asking who their 5 most disliked champions were in order, and the one who received the most number of first places was Shaco. Hardly surprised really. Deceive is arguably overpowered for a basic ability. On a 10 second cooldown at max rank, it's a flash paired up with 3.5 seconds of invisibility, not camouflage, invisibility. Control wars don't work against this thing, and during this time his next basic attack deals bonus damage. What's frustrating about Shaco isn't his damage output, it's how hard he is to catch. He has some of the most brainless and safe ganking out of any jungler, and since he can use Jack in the Box while staying invisible, unless you're watching the map like a hawk with deep wards, you have no way of knowing if he's right next to you until it's too late. On top of that, he can use all of his tools either offensively or defensively. A lot of assassins are good at dishing out pressure but bad at taking it, so if you get the jump on them, they're probably screwed. Not Shaco. The moment you try to engage on him, he just presses Q or runs away or spawns a clone that punishes you for destroying it. I'd much rather fight a Kha'Zix, Evelyn, or Talon than Shaco since even though they also have stealth, they at least die if I get them first. Shaco is brilliantly annoying for all the wrong reasons. And number two, once again this is not in any particular order, we have Camille. Two words, precision protocol. Now listen, one ability alone doesn't ruin a champion. If it were just her Q, she wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. In a similar fashion to Shaco, the annoying thing about her is how safely and consistently she can get that true damage off. In the laning phase, she has the perfect set of tools to survive her weakest point, the early game. Passive is a big ass shield just by auto attacking, so she automatically wins trades. W is a ranged attack that heals and slows. Hookshot makes her virtually impossible to engage on or gank. Then after that, she buys Divine Sunder, and all of a sudden her Q goes from 200 true damage to like 500. By 3 to 4 items, Camille can start two shotting everyone while being durable as hell herself. Now, some of you might argue that other champions have bigger true damage attacks like Seth's Haymaker. If we compare one cast of his W to one of Camille's Q, then yes. But, Haymaker first requires you to lose more than half of your max health to get the full damage, and it's a skill shot, meaning you can dodge it. The only condition to get Precision Protocol's damage is to wait 1.5 seconds after attacking, and she has a plethora of ways to gap close on you even if you do somehow get far enough away from her. Not to mention, we're talking a 6 second cooldown that goes down to 4 seconds with ability haste. At the very least, the other 3 of the 4 horse women of top lane have extremely vulnerable weak points in one way shape or form. Riven's all physical damage, so stacking armor hurts her like crazy. Irelia needs to build up stacks of her passive to get her damage going, and she loses a huge amount of DPS if you dodge her flawless duet. Fiora's true damage output overshadows Camille's, but she's much easier to kite and her early game is more vulnerable. Honestly, just nerf her Q, please. They keep nerfing everything except her Q, her passive, her W, her E, her ultimate, but not her Q. Why does the entire attack have to be true damage? If it were just the bonus damage, that'd be fine. At number 3, we have Yumi. Frankly speaking, I don't consider her as much of a problem nowadays compared to like day 1 release, but I hate her as a concept. Yumi is gold funneling personified as a champion. Remember the Master Yi Tyrex strategy that Riot nerfed into the ground because it was quote unquote unengaging gameplay? Meanwhile, this cat exists. In her defense, Yumi, as in the individual champion, is fine. It took a while to get to that point, but she no longer juices up her companions so much to the point where they can 2v8 the game without so much as thinking. Here's why I still want her out of the game though. Think of a standard match as a game of tug of war. Each player starts out with 20% and any advantage gain such as a kill or objective takes pressure away from one and adds it to the other. And as the game progresses, some champions fall behind, some get far ahead, etc. What Yumi does is take her 20% and give it to someone else, doubling their pressure to 40% which makes it really easy for them to deal with anyone on the enemy team as now it's 40% versus 20% against anyone. For a champion to get 40% pressure on their own, they'd have to be like 3 levels up and a full item and a half 
against their opponent or something. But with Yumi, she gives it to them for free, not just in bonus attack damage or ability power, but healing, shielding, attack speed, long range AoE, crowd control, long range slow. So sometimes you can't match 40% with 220%, so you have to send 3 20%, maybe more. I understand not every champion becomes a raid boss 1v9 OP with Yumi, but the ones that do are often really frustrating to play against, even without her, like the next guy. At number 4 we have Kane. Like Yumi, he's not as bad now as he was at the peak of Blue King Gore Drinker meta, but I still hate him. You can spend all of the early game putting his ass into the ground, but the moment he transforms and finishes two items, he starts 1v3ing your frontline or insta-killing your backline at no risk to himself. Assassins are supposed to be high risk high reward. Blue Kane has the most brainless assassination combo in the game. Shadow step through walls and WQ auto before going back into the wall and running away with slow immune 80% movement speed boost. Oh, and he gets a free point and click 2.5 second on target ability because why the hell not? As for Red Kane, he does too much damage relative to how much he heals. His Q does something like 40% max health damage in the late game. I'm not kidding. It does 5% plus 5.5 per 100 bonus AD twice. That's 10% base plus 11% per 100 bonus AD physical damage in a wide area on an ability with a 5 second cooldown, and he heals for a third of that damage. Both forms of Kane do so much damage for how safe they are. It's partly the reason why last year there were like a dozen Kane one tricks up in Grandmaster Challenger that weren't there before. He's one of the most elo inflating junglers in all of League of Legends. I never want to see Turd Blaster in my games ever again. You guys are now starting to understand what I mean when I say this video is very personal, aren't you? Anyways, moving on to number 5, Gangplank. This one's just kind of like a me thing. Objectively speaking, Gangplank's one of the coolest champions in the game. He's probably the only physical damage control mage in the game, and also the only champion who builds crit items but doesn't rely on auto attacks for the bulk of his damage. So why do I hate him? Because he's a physical damage control mage. His Q reminds me of old Pantheon's Q, a range point and click attack on a low cooldown, only GP applies on hit effects and crits. His laning phase consists of zoning you off with barrels while Q spamming on you over and over and over again to gain free advantage back in the days of Kleptomancy and Grasp of the Undying. If you tried to engage on him, you had to play 50-50 with his powder keg and deal with removed scurvy, which single-handedly invalidates so many champions up top like Mordekaiser, Renekton, Nasus, Jax, Shen, etc. On top of that, he can pressure the map remotely thanks to Cannon Brush. It's just not fair. As you can tell, I don't like champions who can apply pressure or build a lead without having to interact with you, which is why I hate ranged top laners. Conceptually, I love his design, but playing against him is so annoying unless you're a ranged top laner since he just places a barrel down and all of a sudden half the lane is inaccessible. And, you know. <laughs> Number 6, we have LeBlanc. This one might seem kind of weird since there's probably a million other mid laners you would want out of the game, but for context, my champion pool consists of mostly divers and juggernauts, the fighter class essentially, and LeBlanc is really good at dealing with both of them. Let me explain. Against juggernauts, there's a negative percent chance of winning against her. With ethereal chains and distortion, she can permakite you for a thousand years. The only way you can beat LeBlanc as a juggernaut is if she foolishly blows all her cooldowns on you at once. Against divers, even though a lot of them have mobility and lockdown, they don't have very consistent mobility, unless your name is Camille of course. Let's say she dashes away with distortion and you try to chase after her with your dashes, then she decides to blink back to where she was before. She still has her E and either a recast of W or E while you have nothing. The only champs who can keep up with her to some degree are her fellow burst mages and assassins who can one-shot her fast enough to render her mobility irrelevant. Fighters get invariably screwed against her. I know a lot of people like to say she sucks into tanky cost because of her low DPS and single target focus, but again, this isn't a list of champions the world hates, this is a list of champions that I hate. And speaking of personal grudges, at number 7 we have Cassiopeia. There are a lot of ranged top laners in the game, but Cassio top is a special kind of degeneracy. She has the same DPS as the likes of Vayne or Kale while having the ability to stop you from using any dashes or mobility spells that you have at your disposal. Additionally, since most of the time you'll have to approach her instead of the other way around, at any point she can stun you for 2 seconds unless you have like frame perfect reaction or predict when she's going to use it and turn around. Even then, it's still a 40% slow for 2 seconds, on top of the massive slow from Miasma, on top of the movement speed boost from Noxious Blast. Her main weakness is that she's almost exclusively single target, kind of like a magic damage ADC, so if you gang up on her it's easy to overwhelm her. But in 1v1 duels, Cassio may very well be the most anti-melee champion in the game. Hell, she can even destroy ranged champions. No doubt you run into the tank Cassio build once or twice before. It's insanely broken how much damage she can do while being allowed to build a frigging gargoyles of all things. Honestly, she wouldn't be as miserable of an opponent if Miasma didn't ground enemies. It already slows you for a massive amount while covering a large area, which should be punishment enough, or at the very least return the minimum cast range you used to have. I can't be the only one who hates Cassio, right? I'm not gonna lie, 
I feel kinda like a guilty pleasure for voicing my true feelings about champs, but anyways, let's keep going. Three more to go. At number eight, we have Akshan. I don't like him. I don't like his personality, I don't like his playstyle, I don't like his kit. He's a lane bully who scales really well into the mid to late game, and he's a ranged top laner with the same escape potential as Camille, if not better. At first, I thought what was gonna bother me was the stealth, since that's usually the most annoying aspect about someone with it, but it's not. It's his passive. I don't understand why he gets to attack you twice for the heck of it. Lucian's passive is balanced by the fact that you have to use an ability, but Akshan just gets free double hits by existing. Eclipse, one auto, is an instant shield. You only need to attack twice or press the attack as opposed to three times. He is arguably one of the best level 2 power spikes in the game since Heroic Swing doubles as a gap closer and a machine gun. Once again, going back to how strong his early game is relative to how strong his late game is. On the subject of late game, his revive, to this day, makes absolutely no sense. Why does a marksman assassin have a revive? There have been so many instances where my team trades with their team like 4 for 4, but Akshan scores a takedown on that one teammate who took the credit for 3 kills, reviving pretty much their entire team and then they do Baron even though it was supposed to be a 4 for 4. He feels like a top tier from Smash Bros. He just has privilege. That goes for any overloaded champion out there. They have privilege. They can do things no one else can without even taking skill. You just passively revive teammates by playing the game normally. Oh, and uh, privilege. Mm -hmm. Shall we talk about the walking privilege himself? Hey, it's been a while since I bashed on him, okay? I think the last time was like two months ago. In typical on-brand Vars fashion, let's go over Yone. So I don't know how many of you follow me on Twitter, at VarsVerum, hint hint. But there was this one guy back in, I think, March, who for over a month would spam me in DMs and openly on Twitter about how Yone is the best designed champion in the game, how he's completely fair, and how he's like his idol and everything he strives to be in life. Initially, I was like, he's probably a troll. But then I saw how dedicated he was in proving to me that I'm a delusional clown that I started to actually believe he was serious. I kid you not, once a day I would get like 10 messages from him thrashing on me for hating Yone saying, and I quote, Yone is the reason League of Legends has survived for over 12 years. He was released in 2020, but I digress. Statistically, Yona has never been overpowered. He would usually hang around a 49% win rate or so, very often performing worse than his brother. But the reason why I always argue he's so badly designed is that no one enjoys fighting him. And this is coming from someone who plays champs that counter him, such as Olaf, Mundo, Renekt, and Pantheon and stuff. Even so, when I see Yona picked on the enemy team, I just groan. Reason being, he's an X-Factor champion, in that it doesn't matter how far behind he falls, if Yona gets a well-positioned combo, his base numbers and properties can win the fight alone, hence the whole privilege thing. Like, it doesn't matter if the enemy team has 4 items and Yona has only 2, if he can set up a good combo with his alt and 3rd Q, that opens him up for the rest of his team to wipe them out. Now I know what you're thinking, there are a lot of X-Factor champions, and that's true. But Slayers should not be X-Factor champions, they're supposed to be high risk, high reward, feast, or famine. If they fall behind, they should stay behind, that's the whole point. If I could choose to delete only one champion, it would have to be Yona. Even though I can beat him, I'd prefer never to run into him at all. And at number 10 we have Kennen. Similarly to Cassiopeia and Akshan, lane bully with an easy disengage tool while scaling like a monster thanks to his ultimate. What's worse is that he's an energy champion, so in theory he can stay in lane forever as long as he's not low on health. Thankfully not many people play him though. I would delete every ranged top laner in the game if I could. Wow, that actually felt really good. The complaining at least. I'm definitely not going to do this on a regular basis because I consider this low effort content, even if it's edited and all that. Not bad though, once in a while. So what are your list of 10 chants you would remove from the game? I know I passed over a lot that could have easily made the list, such as Vayne, Katarina, Kiana, Akali, Evelyn and stuff, but you can only choose 10. Let me see which ones you hate the most, maybe we can take a survey or something. If you enjoyed the video though, it would be awesome if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other discussion videos if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.